Hello, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sharon Mundia. That's if you're new here. My name is Sharon. And I try and upload videos uh, at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe. I'm about to tackle a topic that I want to say for majority of my time on the internet, I have tried to avoid these kinds of questions because, you know, the internet can be a little bit nosy and sometimes the questions they ask are a little bit difficult to answer and who knows where to start. But something has changed quite a bit in the last year or so and I feel like I'm in a completely different space and so a lot of the questions that I previously thought like, ugh, I don't want to get into, I don't mind so much <laughs> getting into. I guess. I think for the most part, I just feel like I'm in a very comfortable, happy, safe space. And so tackling these questions don't feel as anxiety ridden as they previously had been. Did that even make sense? I don't know. Um, I also want to say that my sponsors for the video are Skillshare. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring. I will talk more about them a little bit later on in the video, but for now, let's jump into the questions. Quick disclaimer. These questions are from last year. I want to say maybe October last year. And so a good number of them might be dated. I should ideally have kind of just gone on Instagram and asked for questions, but I felt like who's going to ask questions if I didn't answer the last one, the last time I asked people to ask me anything. Um, and so I'm just going to go through them and see which ones are valid today. I think a good number of them are. Um, my assistant so kindly grouped them into three categories. So there's personal, lifestyle, and entrepreneurship. She also kind of filtered through and tried to pick the ones that um, she thought most people would be interested in knowing. I did ask her, like, how, how nosy do people get? And she was like, it's not that bad, actually which is great. Anyway, I'm just really excited to jump in. So I'm going to start with the personal category, as I'm sure that's the one everyone wants to get into anyway. Do you see marriage in your future? And if yes, would you want more kids? I don't know. I think my relationship with marriage and the construct of marriage has changed quite a bit. I think growing up, I was so excited to get married. Um, and specifically, it's the wedding that I was excited about. But I, I, I now, I, I I'm more interested in establishing a safe, healthy, mutually beneficial relationship with someone. And uh, marriage, not so sure I'm like, you know, I, I'm not so attached to that. I'm not, I'm not married to the idea of marriage. <laughs> anyway, do I want more kids? I'm also not sure. Like there are moments where I'm like, yes, give me another baby right now. <laughs> My friends will know, will know that I've had a number of those phases. And then there's others, uh, other moments where I'm just like, you know, if it was just me and my little one right now, I'd be okay. So I don't know. More kids? I don't know. Not sure. When did you start TV and how old were you? Um, I believe it was 2018 and it was about mid-year or so. And I then was maybe 29 and it went through till start of 2020. So last year, at the start of the pandemic actually, when the pandemic started to hit Kenya hard, that's when it ended. What degree do you hold? I have a double major in management and marketing. I did that at Monash University, Monash South Africa, um, which is in Joburg. Ooh, here are the more juicy ones. Are you bisexual? And I'm gonna group that with, are you a lesbian? I've answered this before, um, and I don't know if it's maybe people don't watch the videos or maybe missed that mention. And I just, I find it very interesting that people are, you know, curious to have something to talk about with their friends over cheap wine. Like, okay, girl, did you see this? Um, and I, I'm borrowing that quote from someone, I don't know who said that, but I just thought it was so brilliant how, like, don't give people access to parts of you just so that they can have something to talk about over cheap wine with their friends. Like, no. And that's including, like, whether you're on social media, um, or not. Like, you don't have to give people things to talk about and just give them parts of you and explain yourself and all of that. Um, so that's the first thing I think about, like, ah, oh, so you just want something to talk about. And then the other thing I think about is, did you ask this because perhaps you are on a sexual journey and you're exploring parts of your sexuality and so perhaps you hope that 
in knowing that I might be a lesbian or bisexual, that you might see parts of yourself in me and that might encourage you to live fully how you wish to live um, and in your truth rather. Um, I definitely empathize and I relate more to that rather than the first group of people. Um, and so I think that's why like, I've just had a hard time answering this question because one, I'd rather not have people talking about who's in my bed because it's no one's business. Um, and two, I'd rather leave mystery because I'm okay. You know, if you think like I'm an ally, it's good. Like, like just if it's going to help you live more in your truth, yes, do it. Live truly, fully, wholly. Um, but I've said it before, I'm not, I'm not a lesbian. But I also have to add to that, that I also believe that love is love and let people live fully and truly, wholly in their queerness. And I wish this country had different policies, um, but also outside of, outside of even policies, I wish that socially and culturally that we were less judgmental and in, in, some, in some cases violent and um, it's, it's just very difficult to live your free queer life in this country. Um, but I also think that depends, I guess, in many ways on like other issues like social class anyway this is we're getting deeper to it <laughs> but you know i think what i'm trying to say is who cares do you ever feel like your career has stalled and how do you get back at it or back to it i guess um i think maybe sometimes i felt like a a, a fatigue of sorts so maybe not stalled like i'm not moving forward and i'm happy that I've always had like really interesting and exciting brands to kind of jump on and work with rather, um, interesting campaigns to jump on or brands to work with. Um, I think in the recent past, like in the last few months, I've been feeling a little like dissonance because I, I, I've been wondering like what, I, I want to do more. I want to express myself in different ways, um, artistically, creatively, but in many ways, I'd also boxed myself into, you're just a content creator, stay in your lane. And through therapy, actually, we've been working on expanding my idea, my ideas of, my idea around creativity, about being a creator, and not limiting myself. And actually, I have a really exciting project that I've um, just jumped on, but it's also too early to start talking about it, so sorry for teasing. But it's because also of the work that I've been doing that I was able to step in and say, I would love to be a part of that. It's different from anything I've ever done. And at the same time, it is exactly what I've been doing, which is allowing for my creative juices to flow and to be and to expand into whatever forms and shapes that they will take. Um, so how do you get back? I think it's in trying to redefine what I am doing, who I am in this role, you know, right? So not just like labeling myself as just a content creator or an influencer, but really at my heart, I'm a creator and I, and I love different aspects of that. And actually that's why you'd have seen a few videos ago that I was trying to even explore different artistic fields like drawing, which I'm not an artist. Okay, I was never the one who was asked to go to the front of the class and draw for us something. That was never me. That's always been my brother and it's always been my sister. But I'm like, wait, no, actually, I'm going to step into this lane and see what that's about. And I'm going to try that other one too and see what that's about until I really find something that feels right for me and, and gets my creative juices flowing once again. Hi, Sharon. I'm interested to know, how do you stay motivated? Share about your pick-me-ups, please. Okay, this is actually a really good question to jump into my sponsor for today's video, which is Skillshare. So, if you don't know what Skillshare is about, it is a platform that brings together different creatives and experts and tastemakers, you name it. And there's thousands of videos in a number of topics. So there's things from illustration and crafts and entrepreneurship and money management. And I, I mean, you name it, it's there. Now, one of the classes I've really been into is the self-care playbook by Jonathan Van Ness. And his workshop and the sessions that I've been like sinking my teeth into have been trying to create like a, a self-care playbook, but also not sticking 
necessarily to the typical way of looking at self-care, which is something that you do once a week on a Sunday and then go back to work. Um, and, at, and another thing I also learned, and this is through therapy, is that it has to be a daily ritual. Um, it's interesting because Jonathan talks about things like being like creative with your hands. And that's what I've been trying to do with the coloring and the drawing and things like that. For him, I think it's like point needle, needle something. I can't, I can't remember now. That's not my jam, but he also talked about gardening. Oh, I wish I could get into that too. Um, and he talks about things like, you know, physical activity. For me, working out is a big thing, but when I started to write down, and that's something I'd never done before and I learned from Jonathan, but when I wrote down what those things look like for me, one of the things that was major for me was rest and knowing that um, I need to schedule in time in a month where there's no work and there's no guilt involved as well because that was a big thing because I'd not work and then I'd feel really guilty for not working. I have things in there like having a dawa, like hot water, lemon and ginger and honey because that just is like, it feels like a hug cuddles and touch for me is a big thing reading is a big thing and the minute i drop the ball there i start to lose interest and motivation and then everything just becomes one big blob and i start to get irritated with the world um anyway back to skillshare i have to say if you haven't tried skillshare i'd highly recommend it so skillshare have so kindly offered the first 1000 people who click the link in the bio a free premium membership and it's a one month trial but they do have a special offer at the moment, which means that if you click the link in the bio, you will be able to enjoy the premium membership all the way through to September. So it gives you a much longer time to try and work your way through the different topics that they've got. So if it is illustration that you're into, if it is coloring, if it is cooking and baking, home decor, videography, production, you name it, you're gonna find it on that platform. All you have to do is click the link in the bio and enjoy the classes. What's the most important lesson you've learned in life? Oh, I don't know, like the most important, that's so hard. But the one thing I kind of, oh, there are a few things I go back to. First is I am meant to live an amazing life and to kind of remind myself that, that I was not put on this earth to just be miserable and suffer, that I'm meant to live an amazing life, that I have to make my own money big lesson that my mama taught me. And what I'm also learning now is the importance of killing the ego, of dismantling the ego and all the walls that they've built. And, and I'm doing that through, or at least not I'm doing that, I'm working my way through that through Eckhart Tolle's uh, A New Earth. It is the book that we've chosen um, for this month's read um, over on Chasing Paper Books. It's so Good. I also have to say it's also a lot and I wish I had 10 weeks to read it because it's it's a lot Are you happy? You're such a lovely soul love and blessings. That is so kind in this moment The answer is yes, I'm happy and I'm trying to be Aware of what even one what happy means like I just feel Calm I feel good and I think a lot of that has to do with some of the lessons I'm taking from the book a new earth um, but also, if I think about it, like I've got everything that I really need. I've got shelter, my family's healthy, I'm healthy, I've got my loved ones, I'm happy, I am. Going through divorce, I need a few tips on coping. I know you went through it too. Oof, I don't know where to even start. I mean, whether you're going through a divorce, separation, or breakup, I think one of the best things you could have is the support you know, like a group of friends and family, friends or family, if you can have both, that's amazing. But people who have your back and show up for you, like physically show up for you, I think that would be amazing. I also think that in the past, some of the things that helped was certain books. I know it's like typical self-care books after a breakup, but it really has had, like if I think even like, a, like many years back, um, I read The Power right after a breakup and it completely changed how I looked at the breakup like it it shifted so much for me internally um, and then also another thing that I kind of learned through therapy is writing down your feelings in the form of a letter a letter to yourself and in that letter what I remember doing was also kind of just like saying it's okay I've got you I know this is so difficult but guess what I'm not going anywhere I'm here I love you I see you your feelings are valid it's gonna be okay writing that letter to myself like 
I know this feels like the end of the world, but it's okay, honey, we've got this, we've got this, and I'll be here, and take however long as you need, because I will be here. That felt like, oh, I don't know, it was just a really good cathartic process. How do you deal with failure or the sense of being a failure? Help me out, I feel like I'm drowning. Oh man, first of all, I hope you're in a much better space now, because this was many months ago, so I pray that you're in a better space. Um, but I do think we all kind of go through those moments, right? Like where you're just like, what am I doing? Like nothing is working, nothing makes sense, everything is like lackluster, nothing, meh, not interested, I'm ruining everything, no one cares if I'm here or not. Um, and Could you hear that? I'm sorry if you could hear that. <laughs> Anyway, I was, I, I was gonna say that the book I'm reading now, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna reference this book so much, but A New Earth talks a lot about ego, and I think that like kind of victim mentality, that like sweet spot of like, oh my gosh, I'm really just terrible, nothing is working, it can feel almost like a safe space to be in, right? Like, this happened to me, or this, I'm going through this. And I recognize that we all need time to go through it. And I'm the first one to say it because I can also take my sweet time processing it. But I think it's the ego at play, like hard at work and just be like, yep, mm -hmm. me, 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 I, this is hard for me, look at me. Um, oh, I, I hope I'm not coming out as like callous or flippant rather. But I do think this book is changing a lot about how I, how I speak to myself and how I see myself, and I hope it will be a lasting change because I can also very quickly go back into like the, that kind of negative self-talk and um, sitting in that space a little too long where you're just like, meh, not gonna do anything, I don't know, nothing is right. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I have, so how do you deal with failure, or the sense of being a failure? I don't know, but in the past, therapy has been a really good help. Again, good books, um, but also try this, Eckhart Tolle, and if you're in the right headspace, this might be the biggest shift in your life, reading this book. What's your relationship status? I've said this before, I think I even said it on my stories a few weeks back. I could very well be on my eighth marriage, guys. Like I could be eight weddings in, and I'm never gonna talk about my relationship status? No, ma'am, okay? Because, and here's the thing, like I'm trying to navigate this, right? I'm trying to understand myself in a relationship, to show up as best as I can. I'm trying to express my needs and my expectations in, in this relationship, and they're trying to do it too. I don't want, I don't need to be doing this while documenting it. For what? So that other people can just like, I don't know. And listen, here's, here's the thing. I also understand why for some people it works, and I'm grateful that they do. I've said it before, I'm so grateful that, that people like um, Will and Jada have been so open about their relationship because I'm able to learn and glean so much from Red Table Talk and seeing their dynamic and trying to see what parts I want for myself and what parts don't work for me. Same with Esther Perel and the couples that come on and share their difficulties, right? And that's how we're able to learn. But I don't think I need to live out my relationship publicly. Because I'm trying to navigate that. I don't need to document that for the internet. The internet is going to be just fine without my relationship being on there. <laughs> learned that the hard way. What have you learned from motherhood? This is a good one. I think the biggest thing I'm learning is that self-awareness is so key. It's so pivotal to being the best parent you can be or the best anything you can be. But mostly, I think for me, it comes out in parenting. And the more you're able to recognize your triggers, your shortcomings, um, parts where you need to ask for help, the better a parent you can be. And I think it's just taught me like I need to look inward, even as I'm parenting, like I need to be like, whoa, where did that come from? Why am I like, why did I say that? How do I fix that about me? Like I, you can't, I can't tell you how many times in therapy I've been like, oh my gosh, I need to figure this out quickly because Oftentimes, kids aren't learning from what you're telling them. They're absorbing the things that are coming out of you, the things that you're transmitting, the things that you haven't fixed about your fears, your struggles, your trauma. It's transmitting into your mothering or your fathering. And so the faster you fix that and you're aware of those things, the better. That's been like a major lesson. Will you ever talk about your marriage and making the decision to move on? I... 
I actually think so. Yeah. Oh, my battery is about to die. I don't know if I can move. I might move to my phone. I might actually move to looking at my phone because my battery is about to die. Um, but would I ever talk about my marriage? I think so. Yeah. And, and not like to give details about my marriage or what happened, but to kind of just discuss what I wish I'd have done differently in my relationships and how certain decisions led me to certain places in my life in the hopes that that would help other women in their relationships. Um, so that's what I would discuss, like how, like what I've learned and what I wish I had known. Um, but not just like, girl, let me tell you what happened. So on this day, blah, blah, blah. That's, I don't think I'd do that. But I will, I, I think one day I will kind of just share. Okay, I moved on to my phone. Were you anxious leaving your daughter going to work? How did you manage separation anxiety? I don't think I was Oh, no, I was. I think I was a little bit anxious, but not, um, I don't know if I'd talk about it as separation anxiety, but my biggest thing here was to just focus on the task at hand. If I was going in for work, I did nothing but like focus on that work. And I like, I, I can be like really good at hyper focusing and not being distracted at whatever, whatever I'm doing. Um, and then just rushing back home. Um, but it also helped that I had um, a really good nanny and I didn't need to panic too much. Um, I also had my mom around. That's another thing that I think like I'm so grateful for that we live in the same city and she's not too far um, from where I live. And so I'm able to ask for help from her. Whoops. Um, the card on here keeps cutting out every so often. So sorry about that. But um, I was just saying that if I ever needed to travel, for instance, I'm just so grateful that I knew I could, like my mom could step in for me. And that helped a lot. And I recognize like I'm so privileged to have to have her around, my mom. All right, moving on to lifestyle. What do you do with your candle empties once you've burned it all? <laughs> They're actually sitting somewhere back there. I have these big dreams of like taking out the wax and washing it and peeling off the stickers and then turning it, turning it into like makeup brush holders or something. Has that ever happened? No. Are they still sitting in there? Yes. Should I do something about it? Absolutely. One day, maybe. Where did you buy your dining table and chairs? I got them from a uh, Thailand carpet when they were on sale. It's been a really good investment in my home, but I have to say, I think I kind of want something a little bit longer. Like I just want more people to be able to fit on there, but also the chairs aren't so great. You have to keep fixing them and screwing them back. So, cause they start to like wiggle and wobble and stuff like that. So it's not best quality, but it's lasted a good, chunk of time and it was at a really good price too. Can't remember how much, but I just know it was on sale. Which books would you recommend for someone starting to read? I think my big mistake when I was like trying to like read more books was feeling the need to read the cool books. Like this is what's happening. And then I'd be stuck there trying to read like about race relations in America. And I'm like, I don't understand. And I don't want to get into it. I don't, I'm not in the mood. I, I, this, isn't, this isn't it. And so I'd struggle to finish books because I'm trying to be reading the cool books. And the minute I started to focus on the books that really bring me joy, like I started to go through books a lot faster. I think, um, I think it would be hard for me to figure out how to, what to suggest because I don't know if you're into nonfiction and like autobiographies or, or science-based books or, or if you're into fiction and if so, is it thriller, is it drama, is it romance? I don't know, but just, or, or even young adult, it could even be that, but just start by allocating time every single day to read whether it's 10 pages and pick a book that really brings you joy and the next thing you know, you'll be going through books on books on books. Also, join our book club, Chasing Paper Books. Thanks. Maybe what I could do too is list the books or put on the screen the five books that I enjoyed the most. It might be a little bit hard because I've read a good number of books, like really, really lovely books, but I'm gonna try and put five that I think are worth your time that you might enjoy. I'll put them on the screen. How has your relationship with food changed after the sugar detox program? This is Coach Roseanne's program. Oh man, this for sure, I, I've said this before, but um, it just, she just helped shift how I looked at my plate, right? Because for breakfast, I was just like, um, you have, I don't know, tea and maybe sweet potato, tea and bread, tea, sausages and egg, tea, bacon, like, 
that that was what breakfast needed to look like right so like all these different variations or cereal or whatever juice cereal and juice or whatever but like she helped shift it from like looking at it from this traditional like like sense of the of the word breakfast or meaning of the word breakfast to like what is on my plate that my body and my gut needs so is there fiber is there protein is there starch is there like i never looked at things like that before and i know it sounds so simple but it's just in sending her my plates right because i'd have to send like this is what i'm about to eat and seeing how she'd try and like break it down so it wasn't just this is tasty or I've got a salad and it's like, oh good, you've got a salad. But what is in that salad that your body, that's going to fill your body? That's the, that's the kind of nutrients your body needs. So salad looks great, but I can't see any protein. Add chicken, add, what else would she say? I can't now remember, like what is protein? Chickpeas or beans? Something, like add, add pro, you need to have A, B, C, D, E in order for this to be a nutritious uh, plate of food. That amazing. I still sometimes struggle and I still will have my cake and eat it too. But um but also like that's what I want. I want kind of, I want balance um, and that's what she preaches as well. So it's not like 100% of the time you're eating well. I think she goes by the 80/20 rule, which is 80% good eating, 20% eating for your soul. And I love it. All right. Now on to the business side of things. How do we send you PR packages? We're a hair company here in Kilimani and you want to work. That's so lovely. All you need to do is go to the email. It's in the description box too, actually. Yes, my email is in the description box. And um, me or my assistant will get back to you. Will you be going back to living with S? Uh, no, it has been a year and a half now um, since we closed the show and I have to say my heart, my soul, my spirit is at peace. I think I'm better suited here. Um, I do think the almost two years I was doing that show completely changed me for the better and um, there's certain things that I couldn't even have dreamt of it shifting for me in my life and I'm so grateful for that opportunity um, but I'm also conscious of the many ways in which I couldn't fully be myself and have the conversations I wanted to have because there's a whole system to it and there's a whole, you know, like their departments and their bosses and whatnot. And I remember like a few times I'd be kind of like, don't say that again on TV. And I'm like, but why? Why can't I say that? Why can't I talk about things that people are, you know, experiencing or feeling or whatever? But there was just, there, there was lots of, you know, it's a it's local TV station, and so there's red tape. Um, and I, I appreciate the freedom that me doing this on here gives me. Please go back to doing your taking stock videos. I will. I think sometimes I just think like sitting and saying these things is a little boring. So then I'll think like, oh, I should have like, I should do it through the month and then film myself at different spots and blah, 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 blah. And then I never do it because... I forget and also it's a lot of work but I'm gonna try and include one maybe two videos um, in the next half of the year what do you wish you knew about money in your early 20s uh, what do I wish I knew you know what I wish I spoke to finance professional financial advisors like actual actually sought out professional help I think I've, I made some good decisions in my 20s and I, I was pretty bold in some areas and I tried to diversify as much as possible, but I do wish I sought out professional help earlier. Um, I think that would have completely changed things for me. And that's from a financial advisor or even just like from watching things. I think Rena Hicks does a really good job on YouTube and she shares so much on her YouTube channel. So I wish I kind of went back to people like Rena online if I, if I couldn't actually find a financial advisor because I do have one now. I wish I'd kind of just sought out what was in the market at the time. Although 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, was it like a, I don't know if YouTube was as popular as it was now. Um, but yeah. Do you find budgeting hard? Yes. I used to be really good when I was in uni, but um, it, a lot has changed. <laughs> How do you plan for trips and normal day? Um, I, like budgeting now, like I'm, I'm, I find that things have changed quite a bit since uni. And I think it's because uni I was in such a, like, I was really panicked. I didn't want to be in a country away from my family and then not have food. Like you'd rather not have food 
when you've got your family next to you, you know? But like not have food in a country away from fam? Oh no, please. And money was scarce then, so I was really good with budgeting and with my money. Um, and as for trips, I plan months in advance. I have friends who can like on a whim buy a ticket to Paris and it's like, yeah, let's go. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I need time. I need to prepare myself mentally. I need to try and find the best deals, the best prices, the best everything that I, I hope I can find. Um, and also just prepare myself mentally for, you know, for a trip. Um, but yeah, months in advance. Like sometimes I've booked, I've I reserved things a year in advance. How do you get out of the imposter syndrome mindset? This is a really good one because I think a lot of people go through this. One of the things that I found very comforting is knowing that there are people that I look up to and I think you are so powerful and so brilliant and so intelligent. And then to hear them talk about imposter syndrome, I'm like, oh, if they're going through it, oh my gosh, we all are. Like we all are at some point. Maybe not all, but you know what I mean? Like everyone's gone through it. Like I've had my fair share and continue to as well. But knowing that other people that I look up to and admire have it, I was just like, wait a second. We're all just second guessing ourselves. Um, and then another thing that kind of worked, but this only happened once, <laughs> but it was during the Mamas, right? Do you remember when I presented the award um, in South Africa, Durban? And I remember I was asked, it wasn't planned, but when I got there, they were like, hey, would you like to present an award? And I was like, yes. And let me tell you something. Oh, did I almost run to the stage? I was like, yeah. And it's because I thought, I think they've made a mistake. But before they realize that they've made a mistake, I'm going to be on that stage presenting that award. And I had the best time. Who did I present it with? I can't remember who I presented it with. I'll put the name on the screen. Um, but I remember like walking on, you know, to where we were supposed to come and like read the teleprompter and, and everything and do our little thing and, and then, you know, announce the winner. And as we're walking there, everyone, like all the fans were screaming and they were definitely screaming for him, not me. <laughs> but I was just like, hi. Walking with such confidence, be like, oh, thank you, thank you. that they made a mistake, but before they know, I'm gonna run with this. And I often think like, if it was the Oscars or like Cannes Film Festival and they've asked me, I'd just be like, yes, buy my ticket. And I'd run there and just hope like, whew, too late, they didn't recognize they made a mistake. So I think that sometimes, like once worked for me, worked really well. I wasn't nervous on that stage at all. Cause I was just like, <sighs> They don't know it's me. They may, they don't know it's just me. You know. Anyway, um, the third thing I think is again going back to this book, book that I'm reading. I think the ego is re is like a, a, a plays a big role here in kind of adopting a, a, a kind of victim mentality or victim role where it's like I'm not meant to be here. I'm not good enough. I'm less than, and I'm understanding that that is ego and that is something that I can shed and kill and leave behind. Um, oh, this book, man, I really do wish I had, oof, this, my laptop is dead, I forgot I was using my phone, but I really do wish that um, I had 10 weeks to go through this book, but it's okay, it's in my library, it's fine. I'll like read it over and over and over again, but it's, it's a good one and it's one that I think everyone should try and read at some point in their life. I really do. Hey, how do I get to work with other brands as a micro-influencer? I think the good thing with being a micro-influencer is that people are aware, or more specifically, agencies are aware of the power and influence that micro-influencers micro have with their community because you've garnered a number of people who understand you, get you, feel you are on the same wavelength as you rather than having millions of followers and you're just like some people are kind of following you because they just want to be like mm -hmm. uh-huh and then you know what I mean like so agencies are aware of the power of micro influences and so my advice here would be to try and reach out to as many local agencies wherever you are and just kind of have, try to build a rapport, send over your rate card, let them know what you're doing and who you are. Um, but I think that would be a good place to start rather than going to the brands 
where I feel, especially here, people are just like not fully aware and don't always seem to get um, what content creation is about. Not all brands, I think, but agencies most likely will get you. About Skillshare, are the two months free learning a guarantee? Which is also really nice. Okay, so first of all, this was from last year. Um, and I don't know if it was two months then. I do know that like it depends. And sometimes they have like 14 day free trial on the premium membership. And then sometimes it's one month. Um, in this instance, you've got till um, all the way through to September. Uh, but yeah, it's guaranteed and you've got thousands of classes and there are no ads too. There's no ads to interrupt what you're taking in or gleaming from um, one of the sessions or classes. But I think it's worth getting into. I really do enjoy it and like I've learned all sorts of things from like productivity, money management, you name it. But yes, go for it. Link in bio. How did you come up with your rate card? Oh, this is a good question. So first, this was like years ago when I was first trying to... Um, monetize this for me and first thing I did was try to calculate what my costs were so how much would I need to pay a photographer uh, do I need to buy fuel or get a taxi somewhere do I need to buy a dress to kind of set up whatever or whatever flowers or whatever so what are my costs but then the second thing I did was also I had a friend who was in the agency world and I just was like hun um, I'm going to send you my rate card. Can you critique it and tell me what I need to change and adjust? Um, and that really helped as well. Um, and then the third was Google. <laughs> I just made Google my friend and I just Googled what does a rate card look like? What is a starting point fee? How do I build it up? Um, I'll fluff it out to make it look nice. Um, but yeah, I think now there's a lot more resources when it comes to creating a rate card than, you know, 10 years ago. Um, and you should be able to put one up or put one together pretty easily. But I also think you'd, you'd start to know once you work with one or two brands or one or two people, then you'd be able to gauge, like, are you fairly priced? Are you underpricing yourself or are you overpriced? How has your manager helped you in growing your brand stroke business? What is their job description? So I think I've said this before, but I'm no longer with my management team. Um, I think starting out, it was a really great way for me to step back from like the day-to-day um, admin type work and follow-ups and things like that with brands and I was able to focus on other things but I think through the pandemic like we just realized that we aren't fully aligned and there were some things that there was there were some things I wasn't really happy about um, but I do think that finding the right management team is just like finding the right partner or finding the right therapist. I think for me, what I'd be looking for now is finding people or adding people in-house. So it's not like a management team that kind of represents many people, but having a small but core group of people who understand my vision, are aligned with my vision and understand what we're working towards. Hi, landlady. And this is the last question here. What three things would you tell your 21 year old, year old self about relationships and finances? I don't know if you mean relationships and finances separately or like together. So I'm going to answer it as together. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Make your own money, make your own money, make your own money. Um, and, and have conversations too. I think make your own money, have conversations, make your own money. So just to try and understand what someone's money philosophy is because money is a big reason why relationships fail, right? I think we've heard that, we've seen it, we've seen people and probably experienced parents arguing over money, um, probably had those arguments yourself in your relationships. Um, and so the faster you figure out how aligned or misaligned you are, the better. Um, but also, and especially the ladies, please make your own money. It doesn't matter if it is a fraction of what he is earning or she is earning just make your own money ladies like I I just I can't say that I can't stress that enough um, and that's just something that I truly believe I know people might have different opinions or ideas about this but make your own money <laughs> all right you guys that's it um, thank you so much for watching and thank you for everyone who submitted a question sorry that some of them kind of seem dated but I just did feel I can't ask people 
to send in questions when I hadn't answered the last questions that were sent in. So I had to go back. Uh, remember to check out the link in the description box if you want to try out Skillshare. And I will see you very soon. Bye.